Hey kids. I don't know what it is about being on the boat makes me want to go places. I was gonna say it makes me want to go, but I'm an old man, we always have to go. <laughs> Sorry. Bathroom humor, regressing to my childhood. Oh, seriously, for some reason while I'm on the boat, I just don't seem like I, I want to sit still. Um, had the option of spending the day there in Erie and just chilling out and relax and, you know, maybe cleaning up a little on the boat and not really doing much of anything, but I don't know. For some reason, I just felt like going. Got a late start, but I'm not going that far. Should still be there around 6, 6.30 this evening. I'm going to look lollygag a little bit I may stop and go for a swim midday because I really don't want to get there until later in the day like 7 30 or so may even do a late live stream tonight maybe I won't do a live stream tonight maybe I'll leave everybody guessing no I'll do a live stream tonight there's just something about being on the boat that makes me want to go I, I don't I was just thinking about that here and I thought I'd philosophize about it a little bit explore it maybe I guess since I have the ability to I can I mean right now I got the gas tank full I was gonna buy gas there in Erie at the marina but the kid at the dock was telling me how expensive their taxes in Pennsylvania on fuel he says I'd be cheaper to wait to Dunkirk and get fuel there and since I have plenty of fuel to get way past Dunkirk, I think I can get all the way up the uh, Erie Canal to uh, Lockport on the fuel that I have now, probably further than that. So I don't know. I don't know why it is I decided to go. I just, uh, the idea of just sitting there and uh, just hanging out and cleaning the boat didn't appeal to me. It was, it's gonna be a hot day today, hot day. The wind forecast was that it was supposed to be good winds. Well. Here's my good winds. Not enough wind out here to put a sail up by yet. Uh, wind vane at the top of the mast shows the wind coming straight on the nose. So pretty much typical for Lake Erie. The wind comes from Buffalo to uh, Sandusky where I was. And that's just the way the wind blows across this lake. I, I don't understand it. I always thought the winds across Lake Erie went from the west to the east. That's the way the weather patterns are. But apparently the wind, or at least the wind that's been here almost the entire time I've been on Lake Erie, uh, has been blowing from Buffalo to Sandusky. So, I don't know, go figure. So anyhow, I just thought it'd be a good idea to try to make some more miles today. Just see some more scenery, look at some more trees, look at some more boats. I've seen some seagulls come flying by me and get close. And, bunch of fishermen out here dotting the horizon with their little boats a lot of boating activity in Erie a lot of boating activity I'm kind of impressed by the number of boats there but you know for an area that has such a large boating uh, community very little in the way of boating services you know like I mean I kind of think like the British Virgin Islands you know you go down there and there's all kinds of bars and restaurants and places that you can pull up to on your boat and access and uh, I didn't really see much of anything like that on Lake Erie. You would think some entrepreneurial folks would open up a pizza or a burger joint or something that you can, you know, dock at and, uh, and party at, you know. I think somebody would put together a pizza pie, floating pizzeria or a Mark Pies, or not Mark Pies, but... Uh, a Willie T type of restaurant floating out in the bay there. Um, as much you know, boating and traffic there is out there, I think that would be a big hit for everybody. Man, all summer long, you'd be slaying, putting the burgers out for all the fishermen and stuff. I'm sure that would be a big hit. So, so what is it about wonderlust? What is it about makes you want to move? Makes you want to go to the next spot, see over the horizon, see what's around the next bend. Because I've got that bug really bad. I think all those months, years of sitting up in my cabin, not being able to do or see much, and then being in the garage down there in Lancaster and, you know, not being able to get out and see much. 
due to economics and stuff because that's the problem in society you know you're you're in a car you have a car to get around in but who can afford fuel prices to what they are these days and so you don't really go anywhere i mean i'm burning like two and a half gallons of gasoline all day all day i mean what i used to burn just mowing my grass when i had my uh farm there in Ohio I, I burned five gallons worth of gas just going around mowing the lawn that's gonna last me a day or two out here on the boat and in the meantime I'm covering 60 70 miles of lake shore and seeing what there is to see out here so I don't know I'm gonna get hammered I got weights coming at me on both sides so we're gonna get rocking and rolling here a little bit there's the one from the left getting us now and here's the one from the right now getting us. Yee doggy. <laughs> Power boats. All right, a little bit more from the right, two, three more. And we're through all that. So there we go. Yeah, I'm not sure what the deal is with Wonderlust and why it's making me want to proceed. That, that need to look around the corner, I guess. That need to... Uh, you know, see over the horizon. I know as a father and a man growing up, living in on you know on, on dirt like I did, I really enjoyed going for a drive, just getting in the car and you know going around. And when we lived in Montana, we used to call it going once around the block. And for us in Montana, that meant driving uh south down uh 89 south down into uh yellowstone national park around po po popping out over at uh west yellowstone and then driving up past ennis we'd get a burger over there head up by bozeman back around the livingston and back down to our place that was once around the block took all day took all day um fun day scenic day seen lots of animals and elk and bears and all that kind of stuff but really enjoyed that that was a, a fun fun way to get out and spend a day and not burn up too much fuel or spend too much money but i guess out here now on the boat where i'm really not burning very much fuel at all i mean yeah i'm burning gas but i'm not burning hardly anything now and there's so much to kind of see and do it's just you know this constant panorama of sights going by me it's really quite intriguing I wonder, you know, I, I talk about getting into the Erie Canal and taking my time to go through the canal, but you know, the canal, it's always what's around the next bend, what's around the next bend. So I wonder how that's going to play into my plans of taking my time doing the Erie Canal. I wonder how much my wonder lust is going to push me and drive me to get around the next corner. I don't know. I guess we'll find out, but... Right now I'm running the generator to chill down the refrigerator and recharge everything. I got the engine running. We're doing about six knots, or about six miles an hour rather. Um, making good passageway over to Dunkirk. So, watching the birdies and the waterfowl and the seagulls and stuff flying around. Hopefully we won't see any more Mylar balloons. I picked up a couple more Mylar balloons yesterday. I don't know why so many of them end up out here in the lake, but they do. So I'm hoping we won't see too many of them. But a lot of folks are wondering, what's it really like out there, you know? What's it really like being out on the boat and traveling? So here's what it's really like. sitting there watching the water go by I don't know why but for some reason I chose this side of the boat and I think because I got the control here for the throttle and the, I don't know for some reason I probed, decided to sit on this side of the boat Lily sits on the other side you can see Miss Lily you having fun that's what it looks like out across Lake Erie so for hours on end, that's what I get to look at. Now what I do is I watch my heading. You see up there where you can see the shoreline? I want to aim towards the shoreline most of the time. So what I'll do is I've got my 
steering on my pedestal locked, locked down so it's really stiff. So I just give a little nudge like that and the boat will slowly start turning in towards the point of land. I can watch the turn here on the compass as well. I'm looking for about halfway between 90 and 125. Should be about the right heading on that mark there. And when I get there, then I'll make a little tiny adjustment here in the wheel and I'll hold that course for a while. Every few minutes I check my heading and make sure I'm going in the right direction. Sometimes I get distracted with people texting me or something like that, you know, and I kind of get off course a little bit, but not any major deviations. Even if I go around a circle for a minute, it's not going to hurt anything. I get lined up and get going again. It takes a little while to get up to speed. You know, this isn't exactly, uh, you know, jump out of the hole type of horsepower. This is, uh, you know, once we get it going, we keep it going. And uh, the better job we can do with keeping it going, the more efficient she runs and the better our fuel burns. So, but this is kind of it. I mean, this is what it's really like to be out here on the day-to-day -day crossing. Um, I left the marina uh, there at Presque Isle. I stopped over and got a couple gallons of fresh water. The dog, <laughs> the dog had to go pee really bad. And I was like, I want her to go on the boat. I want her to go on the boat. I was like, all right, screw it. I'll take her ashore. I want to get water anyway. I want to see if they had any cold beverages. They didn't. And so, uh, well, they had some pop, but that was it. So I went ahead and I started the engine and I, was, I, and I went forward and I was pulling the anchor and I got back into the cockpit, was just getting ready to put the boat into gear to pull over to the dock so she could run ashore and she peed on the floor of the cockpit here, which is fine. That's exactly what I want her to do and that's exactly where I want her to do it because all I need to do is take a bucket of water and splash this area and rinse it out through the drain in the back. It's perfect for it. So anyhow. So she ended up going on the boat for the first time, which is great. But this is it. I just sort of sit here like a bump on a log and the boat's doing its thing. It's moving me along. I have my autopilot here. For some reason, it's not engaging the wheel. It seems like it's working. I've had it set correctly. It's holding course. It's just not firing up the motor to turn the wheel. So. You know, I've got a bad connection somewhere or something. So, all right, so now you can see I'm getting kind of close to land over there. So I'm just going to make another little subtle adjustment. And that's it. We'll run that course for a couple minutes. For some reason, I can't get the wheel to just get right in between those two just perfect. Sometimes if the wind's blowing right, it'll hold that course for 10, 15 minutes for a while before I have to make any adjustments. But... For the most part, it's like every couple of minutes, I gotta make a little tiny nudge. Like right now, little tiny nudge. All right, so I have my uh, autopilot working. I have my VHF, it's working up here. And I also have my uh, depth finder. I'm a fish finder there. I'm in 42 feet of water. And there's pretty solid bottom and there's no fish. So, go figure, huh? did see a whole bunch of fishermen back there as I was leaving uh, Erie. That was sort of interesting. There must be good fishing right outside the area there, but they were all trolling pretty slowly and I'm already leaving late today, so I decided just to go ahead and get on it and get over there. So Anyhow, this is what it's really like being out here on the boat underway. It was supposed to be blowing wind today. You see any wind? I don't see any wind. Supposed to be 13, 15 mile an hour winds today. I was hoping to get sails up. I don't see any wind at all. So, that was a bust. But at least it's cooler out here with a little bit of breeze that there is than it would be sitting in that marina sweating my nuts off all day. That just didn't sound very appealing to me, especially with all the mosquitoes that were in there last night. I opted to go ahead and get the hell out of Dodge. And sure enough, one of my subscribers, you know, just just having the confidence, just, you know, having the, you know, for lack of a better word, just having the balls to say, screw it, let's go. I wasn't sure I was going to have the funds when I got to Dunkirk to pay for the mortgage. 
uh, <laughs> talking on the phone with a fellow there. He said, well, if you come after 7, just come in and tie up and we'll worry about it in the morning. So I'm not going to get in there until after 7 tonight. And uh, he was sort of hinting that way I could pick up one night free. Uh, and then tomorrow, I'll spend tomorrow and the following night, and then they'll get me for one night. So, and he was ha he was perfectly happy with that. So that's what I'm going to do. And then tomorrow, I'm going to go hit some provisioning. It's like a two block, three block walk to the grocery store, another two block walk over to the laundromat. So I'm going to walk over and uh, and do laundry, and I'm going to walk over and do grocery. I think the Marina's got showers. At least I hope they do. So. Um, See, now I've changed position where I'm looking forward, just a little different seating position. And now I just use my left hand over the wheel and just a little, little nudge like that. That's all it takes, just a little nudge. And we slowly start easing to the left a little bit, a little bit to port, and a little bit to starboard, and a little bit to port. It would be nice if the autopilot was working because it would be making those changes for me, but. I actually find this works out better for me because it makes sure that I'm paying close attention to where I'm going. I'm watching what's in front of me. I think sometimes with an autopilot, you may not be paying as close attention to what's in front of you. So, and here on the lake, when I get around these anchorages, there's a lot of fishing boats. Out here in the middle, when I'm making these big crossings, there's really not much in the way of obstacles. Occasional fishing boat now and then, but. Just enough to have them to be dangerous without, you know, enough that you gotta be watching for them all the time. So, anyhow, there is uh, Pennsylvania. At some point today, we're gonna cross the line out of Pennsylvania into New York. It'll be the shortest trip across Pennsylvania I think I've ever seen. Normally, when we lived in our place in Ohio and had our place in New York, we would drive the full length of Pennsylvania. It seemed like it took all day to drive across Pennsylvania. But on this little flag strip of Pennsylvania that touches Lake Erie here, we're just jumping straight across. So, well, we'll have more for you later, but this is kind of it. A day in the life, what it's like. We've got to do something about the ladder at Rattles. I'll get on that. Yeah, you can go down below if you're hot. Go on, kettle. 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 Go on. She can go down there and lay on the bed. It's a lot cooler down below, not up here in the sun. See how long that lasts. She'll want to be up here with me. Yep, sure enough. I'm not down there, am I? You're something else, dog. You are something else. Instead of being down below where she's cool and comfortable, she insists on being up here with me to keep me company. She's a great dog. Oh, she's thinking about it. Go on, kennel. Bottles. There you go. Amazing how that happened. Yep, yep, awesome. Thank, Thank you, sir. You, sir. Enjoy your evening. Go get my pizza and I'm out of Enjoy here. Thank you, I will. Hi, you got two slices to go? Let me come around. Huh? No. Go here. Sit. Sit. No. Eight dollars and sixty-four cents. That's what it was. Excellent. Thank you.